Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. As the dust settles after the elections, energy is returning as a hot topic for South Africa. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss recent developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. ESCOM is top of mind for President Soro Ramaphosa ahead of his appointment of a new cabinet. That's right. I think uh, the attention is definitely turning to the new cabinet and the composition of that. How many uh, cabinet positions will be there? Will there be mergers of different departments? Will those mergers make sense? And who in the end will lead those departments? And I think energy is going to be uh, focused on very carefully by the public. We know that um, Eskom is in dire straits financially. And I, I think, you know, with this first engagement with business that uh, the president had this week, it was very clear that Eskom is top of mind that this debt crisis that Eskom has found itself in or has got itself into over the last number of years is really coming back to bite the organization. It's this financial sustainability uh, is, um, is not there and it's not going to be able to trade itself out of its current uh, difficult situation financially. And therefore the government's going to have to take some painful decisions around a debt relief option uh, that seems to be the, on the agenda some form of uh, financial engineering to get Eskom back onto some sort of sustainable uh, financial footing. Whether that's going to be enough, um, I don't think so. I think it's going to also involve tariff increases. And whether that's going to be enough, I'm not sure uh, either. And it may involve, uh, have to involve eventually some asset sales and some form, and I know the word is dirty, but some form of, of private investment or privatization of Eskom in some form. Um, so I think there's a, there's a lot of uh, big decisions to be made and they need to be made quite urgently because if uh, Eskom is left um, uh, with the current situation where there's been tariff increases that are insufficient really to deal with its financial problems, the, the 23 billion rand a year bailout we, uh, it's, made very, it's been made very clear uh, is not going to be sufficient to get it out of, it out of its hole with uh, debt rising to over 450 billion, losses over 20 billion, and the uh, debt trajectory rising probably to around 600 billion uh, over the next few years, unless something uh, drastic, uh, some drastic action is taken. So I, th I think that is why the President, one, is going to have, very, have to have very strong, whatever it is, energy, as well as uh, whatever structure oversees public enterprises, but Eskom in particular, and uh, then there's going to have to be some very difficult decisions and made quite soon. There's also been some movement on the regulatory front this week. Yes, for years now, a couple of years now, there's been total uncertainty around uh, small-scale embedded generation. Um, the rules changed in late 2017. Those rules were supposed to actually, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the implication of the rule change was supposed to make it easier in that uh, there would be a whole lot of class of small-scale uh, rooftop solar, etc., not having to go through a licensing process with NERSA. But in fact, it created all sorts of new problems because uh, it, it uh, suddenly uh, made it very impossible, or actually made it impossible for anything above one megawatt to proceed um, to start building. And therefore, we've had some plants that have actually been built and have not been operating as a result because there was a, a lacuna in the regulations and in the policy. Uh, basically you had to get a, uh, to, to apply to NERSA for a license for anything one above one megawatt. You had to get a uh, determination or a decision or a letter from the energy minister saying that that project is entitled to deviate from the integrated resource plan. The integrated resource plan had no, had not catered for any allocation for small scale embedded generation. And basically, none of these projects were getting these letters. What has now transpired is that the Minister of Energy, Jeff Kadebe, has written to NERSA to say that they can consider licensing um, uh, these projects above one megawatt now, uh, up to an allocation of 500 megawatts, which is, which is quite large. And therefore, we possibly could start seeing some action again. We already uh, see that they're cleaning up the the uh, registration process for uh, smaller projects, sub one megawatt projects, and that is becoming much clearer now. It should become much clearer with the public participation process around the new rules. But at last, for mines, factories, 
shopping malls and farms that are wanting to look at bigger installations, there's now potentially a framework for, their, for those uh, developers to approach NERSA for a license. South Africa is not alone in struggling to realign its energy system with global changes and climate pressures. Yes, the uh, International Energy Agency put out a report on investment in 2018 um, across the energy system, so not just electricity but also the fuel system. And the key sort of headline message there is one, there's just not enough investment just to match demand. Then if you were, if you were to then look at the composition of the investment, the composition of the investment is in no way aligned to the Paris Agreement, which uh, sets uh, goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, this, so there's going to have to be one, an upscaling in uh, the amount of investment that people are making in energy systems, electricity and fuel. And two, there's going to have to be a change in the composition uh, of, of that towards much more renewable energy in the system. The IEA also suggests more nuclear in the system and much less coal uh, and less fossil fuel and an electric electrification of the energy system services. So at the moment electrification is really um, you know, not penetrated, for instance, transport mobility beyond electric trains. Uh, that we're going to see over the next few years the electric car revolution and therefore electricity is going to be the fuel source rather than petrol or diesel. Uh, more, uh, more and more into the transport system and then for also industrial heating processes and domestic heating uh, in the rest of the world. South Africa is still quite electrified in that sense but the rest of the world will look at to electrify that because the view is that the easiest part of the energy system to decarbonize now is the electricity system and the reason for that is the massive fall in the prices or the cost of building solar and wind uh, systems relative to uh, coal and gas and then what's happened is we've seen this great explosion of gas use because it complements a variable energy system quite well so uh, there's going to the EIA is saying more, more renewables, some more nuclear but also more gas as you uh, migrate coal out of the electricity system and in that way you have a far more decarbonized electricity system if you then couple that decarbonized electricity system to the other services of transportation and heating, uh, then if you're using decarbonized electricity, in a, uh, you are able to decarbonize your transport and your heating uh, services. And therefore, we need a change in the composition. And it looks like South Africa, who's, I think, really been uh, struggling uh, with this transition. We have really are a coal economy. We are we have an electricity system and an energy system that's built on coal, not just for electricity, but even for our liquid fuels. It is quite a difficult uh, thing to get our head around, and we really are right at the bottom of the pile when we do international benchmarking for our readiness for the energy transition. I think we come second last in the world of those measured, and we're really going to have to get our mind around it. Um, with this new uh, uh, cabinet being appointed in the next few days, um, and uh, we need to start moving towards a path that is more aligned, not only towards the, um, the, the needs of the planet, but also to, to in more aligned to a least cost system, getting, pulling back South Africa's um, previous advantage as a low cost energy destination. The good news is that South Africa is in a very advantageous position to do that because as the world transitions to variable renewable energy based on solar and wind, the cheapest electricity is going to be those places that have got the best solar and wind resources and South Africa is in, in a pound seat with regard to this. We have some of the well, best solar resources in the world and more and more we're discovering we've got some of the best wind resources. So if those become the workhorses of the electricity system globally, we are going to be in a competitive, relative competitive position to attract energy uh, electricity intensive uh, industry downstream of that. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.